I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think, I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. shit. Oh, we go where we're not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. Mm. Thank you, Squarespace, mm. for always sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots Podcast from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start this show. Hezzy! Yo, can can we start by wishing uh, a happy birthday to Martin Luther King the Third's wife, Vulnu. What? <laughs> Wait, what do you, what do you mean? What? You don't know Martin Luther King the Third's wife? <laughs> no, I never heard of her. Who's Vulnu? Well, that's her name. I mean, that's what Joe Biden called her, so I figured that's, oh, congratulations. that must be her name. Honorees, uh, Play the clip. Including your wife. Uh, who I understand, uh, the birthday today. Well, look, my wife has a rule in her family. When somebody's birthday, so sing happy birthday. You ready? Happy birthday to you. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Valley. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. Well, you know what's so terrible about this? Well, not only did he not know her name, this is the National Action Network conference okay. on MLK Day, and you sing the white version of Happy Birthday, bro. Oh, you couldn't even let the Stevie Happy Wonder birthday, version fly. The Stevie yeah. Wonder version that Happy even has a remix birthday. that is dedicated to Martin Luther King Jr.? Wait a minute. Does that one not even have the name? What? The, 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 the black Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday I think it's called Happy Birthday. No, no, but it doesn't have the person that you're singing's name. No. So you would have been you fine. Won. That's right. All this you have, that's right. And, and the whole crowd would have got into it. whole crowd would have been clapping their hands. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, and that happy birthday is actually dedicated to Martin Luther King Jr. There's a whole verse about Martin Luther King Jr. and his dream this and everything else. This is why you need else. representation. This is, happy what are we doing? This is why you need representation. <laughs> this is why you need representation. Where is Kamala? Is she? Where is she? I know. I know for a fact, Vice President Kamala Harris probably does not know the Stevie Wonder version. Wait, why? Is this? A, is, I just feel it in my bones why? that she does not why? know why? the Stevie why? Wonder version why of Happy Birthday. That? I just feel it. I just feel isn't it? What does it say to you that like I'm so fluent in the Stevie Wonder Happy Birthday? You know it. You why? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I just it. sang it, bro. You know how happy confident... birthday to ya? No, that's not it. Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday! Oh, that is it. Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday! Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. birthday. But that's all you need. That's it. You in a black room and you white and you sing it in that cadence, you gonna rip because the crowd gonna sing it for you. Because the song never starts and never finishes. That's right. And then when you don't know the words, you can just go. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Nobody even knows. Except, it. but when you do white happy birthday, you gotta you know. You got that to know at least a person's name. God damn! God and damn nobody in that room knew her. How President fucked Biden. up is that? They, he thought they were going to bail him out because he went. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you feel like President Biden is not getting the smoke he deserves for all the classified documents that are being found? No. I mean, yeah, no. No, what? I think they I all got. I confused myself with the first question I asked. Me too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> me too, bro. Do you think he's getting the smoke he deserves? I don't. I don't think he deserves smoke. Really? Yeah. Talk to me. I just think that, one, you don't do your own moving when you're like a president. I know your lawyer doesn't do it for you. That's facts. I know your lawyer not helping you move. What's going on over there? Taylor, you okay? You Taylor, having a rough day? Taylor drunk. She, I, we get to her later. She yeah, we, we got to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's like you don't do your own moving, so you don't know what's being moved. Your and, lawyers aren't doing the moving for you. We can say that. Also, you know that. That, and also uh, if we're going to be like kind of nuanced about it, like now all the documents and shit that you look at are on like iPads and stuff. The documents back in the day with Biden were when he was a vice president and they were printing shit out. Trump had printed ones out? That was From the last problem, year. But that's the problem. They had moved to a digital system and he was still printing them out. No, I thought that they had classified documents and Trump just took the classified documents home from the White House. Well, no, I guess what I was told is that they've moved to a digital system. Mm -hmm. So then printing out 
the documents that should just be viewed digitally. So in other words, hey, we're going to brief you on this, read the document, and then we take it away, and then it's gone. Yeah. But what he was doing, I guess, is printing these things out. Is that how classified documents work, though? Recently, they had transitioned to this new system. Back in the day, with Biden, that was when he was vice president, they weren't doing it. Wasn't throwing around documents on iPads. I just like consistency. You know what I'm saying? But but do you see, the? I guess, the difference? It's rare that I'm copying these for the Biden administration, but it is a difference in that they transition from a printing out paper system to a digital system. That's the first I'm hearing of that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't. I didn't. I, didn't, I, didn't, I thought everything was kept, uh, you know, in but just here's my classified thing. documents. I don't even care, dude. Like, th- there's no way they're going to print out anything that's that important. They don't do it. Well, here's the thing. And I'm not copying pleas for Trump because it's not about Trump. It's just about consistency. When it happened to Trump, it was all about the documents. It right. was. We don't know what's on them. It could be nuclear codes. It could be personal information that he's selling to foreign the governments. Codes. They don't do that. But, like, but my point is, that's what the media was saying. Of course, yeah. They use it as it. They, like, is it is now there, with Biden? It's yeah. oh well. It's not really about the documents. Classified documents slip up and leak all the time. Now yes. it's about the obstruction yes. that Trump did. Like no, are you, that's yes. not what y'all said when it was Trump. Are, wait, are the, you the, finding out that the media is not fair? Oh, I know the media is not fair. That no, there's no, no. a liberal slant to the media. I, oh, I've always known that. You know what I mean? But it's just the principle. Like, <laughs> let's at least try to have some consistency. Let's not make the hypocrisy be huh. so, they don't so care. blatant. They don't care. You nobody I mean? fucking cares. And that's the reality is nobody really cares right now about just anything. Life is good. We're not close enough to election where we've got to pretend to care about the issues and that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So this type of hypocrisy comes out. And we're like, ah, I don't really care that much about it. Especially since it feels as if the momentum for the Trump campaign is uh, waning. I don't know about that, bro. I don't. It feels it feels it, rough out there for Trump. I, t- I tell you why. I tell you why it's good for any Republican who will become the presidential the the, the nominee because mm-hmm. the Republican Party is gonna stick together no matter what. That's facts. So it doesn't even matter. That's fact. You know Republicans what are like Mexicans in prison. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's push up time, guys. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, They're the gonna be together, organized. Nah, you no, know, you're right. Do it, right. You're right. They're gonna all be on the same page. So high so socks. When people say Trump's campaign is waning, it's just like, eh. All he got to do it? is get there and win, and then everybody's gonna get in line. I just don't know if he got the same juice that he had in the past. Like in the past, that motherfucker was charged up, and now I don't even hear him talking. But well, we never seen anything like it before. Mm, fair you know enough. Know what I'm saying? Now we know all the tricks. There's nothing new. But yeah. I will say, what happens with this Biden situation? It makes it harder to hold the GOP accountable because the harder GOP are the kings of what about is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, well, you did you did X Y Z. Uh, so did y'all. That Trump did. Trump ran a whole campaign on what about? I feel like I feel like that's. Yeah, this is the best thing for Trump. Yeah, that's what his whole career was. Best thing for the GOP, period. Yeah. And, and that's the problem when you try to stand on on moral issues, when you try to have a moral high ground. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, knock it off. Exactly. Yo, Biden literally was on 60 Minutes saying, how irresponsible can someone be <laughs> to just have classified documents lying around? Not even right. found classified documents at three different locations. Right, right, right. President Biden. Yeah. And your administration has no... No, 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 nothing for it. Just yeah. like, oh, we'll leave it up to the DOJ. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? By that, I mean names of people who helped, or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. Yeah. Come on. So my thing is like, what's, I just be wanting to know what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, I thought it was wrong to bring classified documents home. That's it's, what y'all told me when Trump got caught. But now you're saying it happens all the yeah. time and it was the obstruction. But I said the same thing with Trump. Like there's levels to classified. Like if there's some real important shit like nuclear codes or like geopolitical secrets or like names of operatives that are abroad, like mm-hmm. some actual real important shit. They not printing that out ever. That's said in a closed door room with no audio leaking, et cetera. Yeah. That is private information. With this kind of stuff that they're actually printing out, right? This is bullshit. It's like, okay, I, I, what are we going to do with the lawn? I feel like digital would be more easy to hack that kind of shit nowadays. You think? Like, you think? You see what sure. just happened to us last week, that goddamn cyber attack of the fucking FAA. Oh, when they tried to uh, make Pete Buttigieg not run for president? I don't care what. I, you think that's what it was? Sometimes you got to, you know what I mean? Sometimes you got to let them know. I just think America got their jaw tapped a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Somebody well, wanted, that's what it was. Whether it was Russia or China. We had to take it. That's right. Exactly. Somebody, somebody yeah, yeah. wanted to let them know, hey, we out here. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's happening all the time. But I love how like <laughs> if 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 you're not going to do anything back to the country that did the attack to you, you say it was on you. Yeah, Some people say yeah, that about yeah, JFK yeah. getting killed. They're like, that could have been a Russian operative or that could have been yeah. Russia that actually did it. And what America did was covered it up because we didn't want to actually go to full on war with Russia. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you kill a sitting president, like that's war. You gotta get you, you gotta got to. get to bucking, right? Nuke, baby. Yeah. So that's nuke worthy. So it's easier to go, we did it. And then that takes all the smoke out of Russia's or takes yeah. all the wind out of Russia's sails. Yeah. Because Russia's pumping their chest like, yeah, we just took out a president. And then you look at the news and it's like we took out our own president. Yeah, it's crazy that whoever did that uh, really thought that Pete Buttigieg would ever be a threat to be president of the United States. Of I mean, America. he's the only one that's like, can, I don't know, can hold Bruh, a conversation. Whatever country uh, did that, don't buy into the propaganda. What do you mean? America is not electing a gay president. I don't think he's gay, bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think we got to start pulling receipts, bro. <laughs> I think Shut we got to start pulling receipts. Up, it's man. a lot of people claiming gay out here, bro. He's the secretary of transportation. <laughs> That's different. No. That's different. Oh, I was going to say, because you know what he's riding. <laughs> oh. 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 Secretary Pete is Ooh. gay. And I don't think America. A Mustang. I don't think America's ready to elect a gay president. I, I don't, don't. I don't. I think we need to see receipts on the. Like, it's so easy to claim gay. It's so easy to claim bi. I think we need to see gays might have to start pulling up and pulling out on these guys claiming gay. What would be the benefit of faking gay? I'm just saying. Come on, show us. Come on. There was a time where there was so much, and the homophobia still is is way too present. That's why I don't think way uh, too uh, present. I don't think this country will ever elect. And gay I think that that's a president. reasonable position to take. But and you're not yeah you're 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 saying because of how homophobic people are. Absolutely. But there was a time where the homophobia was so present that if anybody said they were gay, yeah. you were like, well they must be. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. oh my god, there's so much homophobia and so much backlash and so yeah. many people are going to hate you because of that, so you would never lie about that shit, right? Maybe we've come to a time where there isn't as much of it and there are advantages to claiming gay. I think there's more homophobia now. And I think that if there's one thing I that I think it's white people's way out of like white responsibility. I don't even think it's just white people who are homophobic though. No, no, no. I'm what saying mean? like when like you like these like white like singers or actresses or that kind of shit are like, I'm gender neutral or I'm bi. It's just their way of like tapping into an oppressed thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're not a straight white person, so now you're not responsible for all the fuck shit straight white people have done. So you you're part of the oppressed class. So now you got some victim currency. Without doing nothing. If you claim bi, you get to fuck the people that you want. You get to be straight. I believe. Still. I believe anybody who's of the LGBTQ plus community is really a member of the LGBTQ plus community. I believe y'all need to check the receipts. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Pull up. Pull out. <laughs> pull up and pull I just don't out. Think, I, just don't, I just don't see the benefit in. Pretending don't take that. advantage of 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 gay people's actual gay people's struggle. That's what I'm saying. Don't co-op their struggle yeah. for your career, you know, to have success, to yeah. remove, uh, you know, the whatever you're trying to do to remove your privilege or whatever it is, because people really went through it. No, a lot of gay people going, really going through it and no, still and going, going through, through it. it and going through it and going through it. No, you're right. So we pulling up and asking for receipts. <laughs> I need to see some but the only DMs. Reason I, only reason I say that's not fair is because I do think we live in an era where people have more confidence to come out now. Yes. Because of how many people that have come out. You know that's what I'm saying? True. So yeah. I think a lot of times when we see these people and we be like, you really? Uh, it's because they never had the confidence to come out. So now, yeah, they might have to wait until 30, 40 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. everybody ain't as brave as the youngsters. These youngsters will let you know straight up. Like we flew it, baby. And then come back. And word up. Like, they'll word be like, up. I'm a girl. And then, like, a year later, be like, I was playing. It's right. <laughs> yeah, man. I was playing. I was curious. I was, I was curious. Yeah, for real. No, yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. Salute to the LGBTQ community. You know what I wanted to talk to you about, man? Talk to me, man. This is something that I've been seeing. Uh, oh, can we talk about the video you showed? Oh, yes. Let's play this clip because this all it's all about comedy. Um, This clip. We're going to insert this clip. It's this clip of... Uh, um. <laughs> The, the Jeffersons. Jeffersons. People may not realize that All in the Family was a spinoff of the Jeffersons. If you have a certain age, you remember that. You know what I'm saying? So Archie Bunker 
was on an episode of the Jeffersons, the, uh, the good sister comedian, Miss Pat. She posted a clip of this and she said, this is what sitcoms used to be before y'all got soft. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? I actually think this is incredibly progressive. Talk to me. Now, we look back at it and we, we see all these incredibly racist jokes and we go, wow, this is racist. But I think what the show is exposing is one, racism of all races and cultures, but also like here are the mistakes that white people that don't know black people or enough black people often make with black people. That's right. They don't realize a thing. They're not coming from a hateful place, but the thing that they're saying is racist or hateful. That's right. So we're going to show you in the funniest fucking way why you don't do that. And I bet you there's a whole bunch of white people that grew up watching that show going, oh shit, we can't say mammy or whatever. Or you can't yeah, say, yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I didn't even know that term was racist. Yeah, mammy is a term uh, used to uh, degrade black women. But to your point, that's why TV is art and that's why they call TV programming, right? Yes. I, I can think of an episode of Girlfriends when Lynn, who's biracial on the show, her white sister is in the hair salon singing Jay-Z H to the Izzo Ooh. and she says the N-word, whole hair salon stops and yep. now they spend the next 20 minutes of the show having a discussion about it. So yeah. you see what happened that was wrong yeah you see people react to it yeah and then there's a solution yeah. by the end of the show yeah we need more of that but I, what i liked about this it was it was like medicine and the candy yes like you don't even know there's medicine like we're putting the medicine in yeah. it because we're basically going oh wow you kind of teaching people what you can and can't say at a time where white people did not have probably as many black friends and they're plenty of white people that had no black friends yeah. so they don't even know what you're supposed to say and not say yeah and and but also exposing that there's might be uh, racist or prejudice from black people to white people. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, obviously yeah. the mixed cult, cult, uh, the mix cult, mixed cult. Want, Dr. Umar before Dr. Umar, baby. No, that's it, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the they fucking blueprint. They don't want the interracial relationship. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was just really cool. And there is a way to like use racism in characters to a uh, teach. I don't want to say teach a lesson, but you that's know, exactly what it is. Yeah. Though. Yeah. It is kind of cool. So yeah. it's it's very easy to look back in this and be like, oh, this is some racist bullshit. Is it though? Or is it no. exposing what does happen in life and why it could be wrong? It's art reflecting life. Whose phone keeps going off? Taylor, of Taylor course. really going through it today, huh? And she wants to have a baby. It's and, uh, no, we she's don't talk about that all day. it. But she, like, she, she said is that it to what me. She, does when she we said don't it talk to me, to and she yeah, said yeah. it to you because she yeah. wants us to talk about it on the yeah, podcast. I could tell. Clearly, I could tell she wants to have a baby. What I do when I walked in. I gave her a you hug, her right? Because yeah, I was like, yeah, you yeah, are yeah. fucking going through it. Yeah, you could tell. Yeah. And now she just wants yeah. attention. She leaves her phone ringing. Yeah. Nobody texting her. You can tell. She's on her laptop texting her phone to make sounds yeah, so yeah, that yeah, we yeah. can talk about her on a yeah, fucking you, podcast. Yeah, you, you was, you was, you, I thought you told her that because of her new girl. That's what, you, that made you think she was going through it. Why did you all of a sudden want to have a baby? What's that about? Don't, 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 because you did this. it on purpose. You told me this. and you told Andrew because you wanted to be talked about. Why do you and, and you got the little Bronx baby fat coat on? Yeah, she ready really to be does. a little teen mother. She really does. <laughs> you really are dressed that's a, like that's, a teenage yo, mom. She right got now, the baby yo. fat snorkel, the baby yeah. fat snorkel with the fur on it. <laughs> she is dressed like come New York come. teenage mom. This is get over this here, is yo. definitely sixteen get year old here. teenage mother yes. from the Bronx. <laughs> yo, <laughs> I heard Brenda got a baby. Yo. But Brenda barely got a brain. <laughs> a damn shame. That is definitely the teenage pregnancy coat, yo. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it, it really is. is. It is that yo. is, yeah, that's a wild. Situation. Why do you want to have a baby, Taylor? Go ahead, tell us real quick. Maybe somebody's listening. Maybe they want to make that mistake <laughs> and get you pregnant. It's always first of all, first, I'm not like... getting pregnant unless I have like a husband and all that other shit. Okay, so you're not getting okay. pregnant, but. Fuck you. But I'm just saying, like, seeing my nieces this weekend makes me, like, feel with love. And I just want a daughter just like my nieces. That's all. Why not just be auntie? I love being the fun. I am the fun aunt. But, I, you know, I want one of them. How you know you're the fun aunt? I definitely am the fun. Why? Compared to my sister. Because they laughing at you? They might be laughing First at all, you. no. No, they're not. Why is she so old in our height? How old are they? <sighs> Stop. What? They are 9, 13, and 6. Oh, 13, you're definitely taller than you. No, she's not, actually. Oh, okay. Not yet. All right. But I don't want to have this conversation. It's a deep one, right? Not really. How y'all make it. No, it's, it's not about to be deep. Y'all about no, to make it's fun deep. of. You want to have a baby. It's just a beautiful thing. You're going through the life process. How old are you? Yeah. 31. 31 years old. So you got about maybe like four more eggs left or something oh, like that. That's true. Okay. We need to stop that. Too, what do you because, mean? 
because that's just not real. Stop. What are you talking Stop. about? Stop. I mean, that's not real. Hold on. What? I'm just doing that. That's not real with I'm what the doctors are saying. I'm doing yin yang for real. There's plenty What's of women. What's not real? Tell us how science ain't real, y'all. <laughs> Tell us because how it's not real. Because there's plenty of women that had babies when they were old of age. I know. My Those mom had rich. me. When she was 35 years old. Okay. Look what happened to me. Like, exactly. You're That's fine. I'm fine, but I'm a little wonky. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm old sperm, old egg. Clearly, like, you you see me, it's old. You know what I mean? My toes don't work. I got arthritis everywhere. Yeah. I'm not even 40 years old because my mom and dad were fucking old. <laughs> so they passed down that arthritis. <laughs> so you got to get to, you know what I mean? You got to get to getting shot up. Well, tell these guys to, you know, step it up then. Step what up? Are you are you soliciting guys to shoot your club up? That's a no, wild I'm thing. That's crazy. No, I'm not. Crazy. It's no, I'm not. Right I need here. a ring on my finger first. Uh-huh. And then we could talk about babies. But other than that, no. You're gonna have to let you're gonna have to calm down with all these demands. You're not in the demand age. You are not <laughs> What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> you know, like like you reach not a in certain the demand age. age is like crazy. demand age is like twenty six. You saying she had to end her contract? <laughs> Wait a minute. You saying she had to end her prime That's year, not bro? Real, yo. <laughs> are you are you saying she should be asking for the veterans minimum? Is she might... trying to get the max? That's what I'm saying. Whoa. That's what I'm stop. saying. Whoa. Stop. Whoa. And I know you should stop talking too. Whoa. You should stop talking. Can Brady command the max? Yo. There ain't no way Brady getting the max. I know he's had a lot of good years. He's done a lot of good stuff, but nobody paying Brady whoa. the max right now. Whoa, whoa. I'm just saying, you whoa. not There's in the age of I need a ring. Of... Da, 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 da. Yes. Because he need to see if you work first. He's like, let's get pregnant, then I marry That is true, yo. That's crazy. Yo, you, you're acting like, you know, you, there's just these guys out here, but what if these guys don't want to get you pregnant? What if they talk to you and they're like, I don't know if I want to breathe with her. Okay. You ever thought about that? <laughs> okay, but I don't get that, though. I get actually people wanting to. So. Getting one in the what? Breed with me. Stop yo, just because yo, 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 tell. Oh, did your uncle really have to tell you this? Don't listen to nothing a guy says when he's on top of you naked. Oh, I Who love you. I want to be with you. Have naked. my babies. No. You believe that silly no, shit? First yeah. of all, that never happened to me during sex. They don't hear it from the, the top. Them saying that—that's too much talk. First of all. Oh. And then second, you don't let them talk to you. I don't like, I like grunts and all that other stuff. You don't got to talk. I want to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I want to breathe. Just no guy just saying get off like the bedroom or out of the bedroom uh, saying that shit. Happy so, birthday know. to you. Yeah, don't even know her name. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Daddy, happy birthday. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. That is that's crazy. Me. Excuse me. That, that, Excuse no, me. No, no, you got to say That does not run through so, my family's blood. So, Taylor, listen. What? Those guys that have said that to you, why aren't they viable candidates? Yeah. Because I saw stuff in them that I don't like. Why don't you fuck with no white people, bro? I can't do that. Why not? Not in this age. No. Why not? Not in this age. Not in this age. Not in this age. <laughs> why no. not? Not at 31? They not no. going to be down for that? Not if, I don't want to. I want. I don't want a half baby. I want all black. No, <laughs> I don't want a half. Baby. Let me ask you this question. She wants a whole baby. That's bro. fucked up. <laughs> you don't want a half baby. You don't want a half baby. Yo. Why no, would you want a half baby, man? That's <laughs> what's wrong with that? It's half gonna come out easier. It's not gonna fuck up your body as much. Wait, what? It's gonna slide out easier. It's not as big a half Says baby. Who? Yeah, shut up. But I'm just saying. Listen, I hope, it's, I hope, go, hope you get your wish, Taylor. No, Thank you got you. this. I do. I hope you get your wish. You got this. You want the baby? I'm serious. I see, can I see your fucking lips curving? I do. <laughs> if you want a baby, I'm down for that. I'm happy for you. But you got to find a guy. Exactly. That, that's the only way I'll have a baby if I have that's like an actual. That's works. No, stop. Girl. As if I yo, have like a yo, family, like yo, building this a family. Girl, she got standards, bro. Yes. Yo, the only way I'm having a baby is if a guy gets me pregnant. I hate That's the only way. I'm not having a baby no other way. That's a guy. I don't want to hear shit about no stalks. Nothing. Okay. No artificial insimilation or whatever the fuck it is. All right. I'm not having a baby if it's not from a man. Man gets me pregnant. I'm still here for, you know, hopefully in the future y'all can have babies too. But, you know. What do you mean? We, we can't have before. babies. No, men. I want y'all to be able to carry, to carry the baby. Why? See, this why is the type not? of shit that's going to make you not get pregnant. You know? Exactly. But why not? That like, why do y'all not want to share share that? God got to have a favorite, yo. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? God, God, gave, God, have God a gave his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, yo. Oh, God. Woo! 
God got fact. bars, bro. God know we can't handle no, God no got kids. Bars, bro. All you need to do is just get um. What's what? it called? C-section? A C-section, yeah. Nah, 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 huh? nah, 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 nah. To have a baby. No, C-section, is, C-section, C-section is worse. Of course. Trust but... me, I've seen them all. You know what I'm saying? My second daughter was delivered C-section. C-section is worse. They have to, that's a surgery. They got to cut you open, rearrange your organs, take the baby back, and put the organs back oh in the right place. God. It's so much room for error with oh C-sections. Like, vaginal birth is way more safer than C-section. But I'm just saying C-sections happen, though, right? Nah, man. If, I'd rather have it out my butt. <laughs> I would not want no Well, I, I hope for that, okay? Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. I just want y'all to share it. I just feel like it's not fair that we have to deal with all this shit. It's y'all don't like nothing ridiculous. God gave y'all. Yeah, why? So we should like God. periods and everything else? No. Also, your birth is going to be quick how short you are. Shut up. It's not. <laughs> it don't got to go small. Yo, right? future baby, please don't try to bungee jump out of tail. <laughs> you will <laughs> smash your fucking head Whoa. on the ground. Whoa. Come on, Nine bro. Nine months down the drain. Shorter people have more babies. Asia. <laughs> Oh my Two god. Two billion Asians. Whoa. There's like five Whoa. Swedish people. Because it's so tall. It's hard Whoa. to get them babies. You don't want out. that, yo. You don't want you that. You can have a baby. You don't even know it. I'm telling you. The doctor gonna be playing Usher. There goes my baby. Bang. You don't want Done. that. For real. <laughs> you For real. don't want that. For real. You gonna think you got some flatulence one day and once <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> boom. You think you push out a I'm mark. very well aware of my body and what happens with it. So that's not going to be no surprise. You say that everybody, see, everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. That's what, that's what have giving birth is. That's you what see, that giving, giving birth, birth is. No joke. How do you know? Because I've seen four Just of them. Just because you see it, you haven't felt it. So that's what I, I'm listen, saying. Y'all I, I know. See, it. see, this whoa, is what, whoa, whoa, see, whoa, you've never whoa, had a soulmate. Whoa, whoa. You never saw a video so, of something that was impactful to you? And, and she's never had a soulmate. So being that oh, she's never had a soulmate, she's who? never felt anybody's baby. Because if you had a soulmate, you'd have a baby. Because she, she never felt she never felt anybody's Damn, baby. Damn, bro, you cooking right now, bro. You <laughs> cooking right true. now. That That's was a true. big, big, big. I didn't have nothing That's to say not that one. <laughs> she never felt anybody's pain. If you saw yeah, your you, wife, or, I said, you I, could I feel felt my pain. wife's pain. You yo. could feel her pain. I'm bro. telling you. And, and every time was worse. Yup. There was never a time and it was like, oh, this is easy. She did this with it every time. Yup. Yup. But I want you to have a baby, Taylor. Congratulations. I want you to have a baby, too. Can you wish me, like, a good man to have a baby with, too? I ask, I mean, you, you asking, asking a for a whole much, lot. Man. You asking for a lot. Damn near 40 years old talking about much. I need a good man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Why don't, we, why don't we just start at come? Post. Yeah. <laughs> How about post? Yeah, that. You know what I'm saying? Then come. Yeah. Like, right? let's just chill out. Good man. Getting all picky. Damn near 47. <laughs> you know what I mean? 47 years old. Do you know what I mean? Come on, yo. It's so funny that she said she want a baby and she decided to break out the freaking teenage pregnancy <laughs> coat. Because she, she's trying to lure him that in. That is crazy. You trying to lure him in. You want a like a twenty one year old Dominican from Queens? Ah! That's what you going after. You going ah! after a twenty one year old Dominican oh, from from man. Washington Heights? Because she know how fertile Dominicans are. She's That's like, it. Fuck that done, man. done, it's done. Okay, Taylor. I want you to have a baby. Mm. All right, let's let's move on now. Explain to me. I want. I'm gonna ask you a question. Yep. And I, I think you're qualified to answer this because okay. you are a comedian. Number okay. One. Okay. And we we. We don't, we don't like panda bears. We don't like panda bears. Panda right? bears, right? Have you ever thought Chris Rock was pandering to white people? No. Never. No. Where is this narrative coming from? That all of a sudden, Chris Rock, the man who gave us bigger and blacker, the man who used to get in trouble for racist jokes towards white people, where did this rhetoric come that he pandas to white people in his comedy? Yeah, I don't know. I do not... Yeah, I do not know. Where do you think? I do not know. The first, I saw, you know, our good sister, Ebony K. Williams. She said she saw him last year. I saw him last year. Oh, yeah, she said yeah. she felt like he was pandering. I didn't see that at all. I had a very interesting weekend. Mm-hmm. It started by me attending the Chris Rock show by myself. Okay. I have been a lifelong Chris Rock comedy fan. For me, Chris Rock is done. Chris Rock was so clearly shucking and jiving. Don't tell me that. He was so clearly curtailing his bits for white claps. Mm -hmm. It was just full on, unapologetically anti-black. Really? This black ass man was sitting on this auditorium. Basically what he said was, I'm black, but I'm not a 
and he said it in front of a room full of white people. Right, and they were laughing their fucking asses yeah. off, Dustin. I left halfway. I was disappointed. I was hungry. Mm-hmm. Let me just take my black ass on to Checkers. I left there thinking he need to be slapped one more time. I didn't like the first slap. I thought it was just, you know, whatever. But now I'm like, what's well, shit? Where's Big Willie when you need him? Yeah. Uh, and then Jason Lee was on the um, See The Thing Is podcast with Mandy and Bridget Kelly. And he said that Chris Rock pandas the white people. I When? <laughs> when did this happen? All I mean, I've ever seen Chris Rock do with his stat is challenge white people. Yeah. Challenge the white supremacist system. Yeah. Chris Rock is the guy who literally within two minutes of, I, I think it was, uh, was it Also Judah explaining Methodist? the black experience. I would say explain the black experience to white people. Okay. Like Chris got that great joke where he's like, uh, he talks about his neighborhood. Yes. That joke. Yes. Is one of the best jokes yes. about explaining yes. the black experience and like what white, I don't know, what does he call it? Like white mediocrity. Yeah. Is. I think that would be, like, that would be the bigger and black girl killed a messenger. He basically talks like what a black person needs to do to achieve like what a regular white person. Yeah. He like, said, he, goes, he said in his neighborhood, it's only four people. It's Mary J. Bly at the time. Yeah. He Mary goes, J. Yes. Bly, I, in my Eddie neighborhood, Murphy. there are four black people. Yeah. It, it, it is Mary J. Blige. It is Jay Z, Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, and Eddie Murphy. Is it Eddie Murphy? Murphy, Yeah. And he goes, he goes, he goes. Now that is the greatest R and B singer of all time, uh, greatest greatest rapper rapper of all time, greatest comedian, greatest comedian of all time. And and then he says, like, and a pretty good comedian. He's like self deprecating with himself, right? And then he goes, my neighbor is a dentist. Word. My white neighbor is a dentist. He didn't invent the veneer. What? Like, but it was brilliant. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, I I think this is really unfair. Uh, listen, there's a uh, there's a there's a essay that Chris Rock wrote on racism a while ago, and uh, I think it was Hollywood Reporter and one of them. But go back and watch the Oscar So White monologue from 2016. Mm. Not just watch the monologue, watch the whole show, and watch how he challenges racism and white supremacy. Like there's one part where he goes, "This year, the in memoriam package is going to be all the black people that were shot by cops." On their way to the movies. Yeah, I don't... You know what I'm saying? Like, I, Maybe it's because he operates in white spaces more often. Well, he speaks about that here on uh, this this thing with uh, uh, Kevin Hart show, on Kevin Hart show on Peacock. It's a weird thing. So I do bring the pain, and I'm on Oprah, and I'm on 60 Minutes, and I'm just all... I'm on the cover of every magazine or whatever in the world. But you had that that Whitney Houston rumbling with, like, only white people like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Too many white people like him. So when it was time to do my next special, I'm like, oh, oh, you think only white people like you? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to the Apollo. Mm-hmm. And there ain't going to be no white people nowhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to call the special big. This is the blackest special that you will ever see. That's my point. Like, like, It's like, yo, yo, have you ever seen Bigger and Blacker? He does it in Harlem. He starts off talking about how he's scared of young white kids because oh, all yeah, they do yeah, is yeah. shoot people. The elevator joke. Yes, yeah, he's yeah. got a whole bit about racism and how white people need to shut the fuck up about losing the country. I'm like, this is this is a tricky thing because I think that one of the, I think that the genius of Chris Rock is that he's able to communicate things that black people know from their own experience. Mm-hmm. To a way to n- to non-black people, it's not mm-hmm. just white people, yeah, yeah, absolutely. but it's to the masses, absolutely. right? Absolutely. There are Indians that love Chris Rock, Asians that love Chris Rock, right? And he can communicate those things, and black people get to go, "Yes, I relate to this. This is it." And non-black people get to go, "Oh shit, that's hilarious. I didn't see it that way." That's right. Now, and a little bit of shame, a of lot course. of shame, sure, a lot 100%. of shame. You're embarrassed that you didn't see it like that. Yo, they called Chris Rock racist. A couple, of, well, they called him racist a few times for white jokes he made about white people, and the fact he used to use cracker. All the goddamn time, yeah, yeah, yeah. which he's back doing in this new bit, which I love. Yeah. But there was a time where it was a school shoot and I forgot where it was. And Chris Rock posted on Instagram what everybody thinks when it's a school shooting or when it's a mass shooting. Yeah. And he put a picture of Betty White, Betty <laughs> White. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they called him racist for that. Like, I'm like, yeah. Chris, well, all think, Chris Rock has done is challenge racism and yeah, white but supremacy. this is what happens when you're successful is they have to find a way to discredit you. Mm-hmm. And that's just a part of success. I'm sure you've experienced it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've experienced it. It's like they have to find a way to nitpick you because it's easier to tear you down than for those people who aren't as successful to just look at themselves and go, oh, shit, I don't got what he got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's what happens when you get super, super famous, successful like Chris Rock. And also there might be some Will Smith fans out there for real, like. There might be some Will Smith fans going, okay, we got to pick sides now, and I'm going to go with Will because Will didn't ever do this. Well, listen, if, if if that is the case, and this is because of Will Smith, if y'all thought that people, if y'all are saying 
Chris Rock panders the white people with his comedy. What do you think people used to say about Will? Oh, I mean, also. What do you think they used to say about Will? I mean, they used to call Will soft. They used to say Will is just, a, Will, white, he tap dances for white people. They would, yeah. that, that was a thing. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Also the, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't think Will did like an explicitly black experience movie Ever. until he got canceled. <laughs> right? Now, I'm sure this is by design. I'm sure his agents are going, well, we want you to just be the biggest superstar in the world, yeah, regardless of yeah, race. Yeah. So we're not going to pick a specific movie that's tied yeah. to race. Yeah. But I put it like this, Will. Which also does open up other opportunities to other black actors yes. to, to, to play roles that aren't specifically, hi, I'm black guy. Will's trajectory was not that of Chris Rock. Will's yeah. Will, There was never a time when Will was on the come up where he was like, I'm going to go to Harlem and make a bigger and blacker. Yeah. Because that's not what you did when you was a big Hollywood superstar. Yeah, maybe the thing with Chris Rock is when you see him in like films and when you see him just hanging out and you see his peer group, it's all white people. So you're like, oh, from the outside. That's yeah, what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, from yeah. the outside, the average person goes, oh, he's hanging out with Seinfeld or he's hanging out with Sandler. Or he's hanging out with all these dudes. So it's like. But that's the New York comedy. That exa that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I recognize that. Yeah, and yeah, I go, yeah. oh, these are his peers. These are the greats that yeah, came yeah. up at the same time. Absolutely. Not to mention there are plenty of other black greats that came up at that time that I'm sure that he's close with. But when you think of him in those circles, you're like, OK, I see him as comedian. So I'm seeing him just hang out with other comedians. This is going to sound so fucking stupid. But when there are a bunch of comedians hanging out, it's not like I'm white first and then comedian. It's we're all comedian first yeah. and then race. Yeah. And that allows us to talk about things in a kind of wild way. Yeah. So I wonder if the perception is you not seeing him doing traditionally black cultural things as much and doing mainstream things. But what did he not do that wasn't black and cultural? Essence From Fest. He didn't host. I host Essence Fest. I've done that three or four <laughs> times, but he's never done that once. Here's the thing. Chris Rock has always been the black voice to me in mainstream, whatever that is, America. You yes. know what I'm saying? He was yes. always the black guy that was black, but still representing hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Still representing blackness on a high level, whether it was the HBO show, the Chris Rock show, yep. whether it was Everybody Hates Chris, yep. whether it was him on SNL, yep. whether it was his stand up. He was a black guy that I saw get super success by really being black. And being militant almost. Bla about. Militant. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like he, he wasn't, he wasn't on, doing man. it in a like a metaphorical way. You know, he wasn't doing it in like a more uh, cartoonish way. That's right. He was deliberate, straight right. to the point. That's this right. is what I want to talk It never changed. Yeah, you, know, you can go back and watch his last stand-up special, Tambourine. He starts off Tambourine by saying, I want to live in a world with real equality. I want to live in a world where an equal amount of white kids are shot every month. That's I want to see thing. white mothers on TV crying. That's how he starts off Tambourine. Yeah. This was two years ago. Now y'all trying to tell me that Chris Rock panders to white people in this comedy. Now, Taylor brought up a good point because I always like to ask the young and not so young like Taylor. Yeah. You know what middle I'm saying? Age, middle, middle age, age middle yeah, age. Middle I like, age. I, have to, I like to ask middle age people. Middle age women what they're thinking. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? And she brought up the... Uh, Taylor this, having a midlife crisis now that we absolutely, think about it. Absolutely. 100%. Ab <laughs> absolutely. That's what like... Absolutely. Man, we buy cars. Absolutely. She's like, I need to get I need pregnant. to have a baby. I need to get <laughs> yeah. pregnant right yeah. now. But she was saying that that video of Chris Rock, Seinfeld, uh, Louis, Louis C.K., Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. Talking Funny, I believe, is the name of the show. Yes. She yeah. said that segment where he's allowing, I'm not going to say allowing, but they were using the N-word, Yeah, you know, in his presence. Yeah. She said a lot of people see that clip, and, and she said that's why she thinks That's a really that. tough clip outside of... Context. The co and again, not outside the context of the show, outside the context of being comedians. Mm -hmm. What this was done... This was done in a time where there was a real curiosity about comics, and we kind of accepted that comics were going to say wild things that other people did not. And there were a lot of comics, some of our friends, contemporaries, that yeah. have jokes with the N-word. Yeah. Like, you look Louis at... Louis C.K. was Louis one C.K., George Carlin. Yeah. Like, the the goats, the, the people that would call the goats. Well, Barbara Walters would bring it up in interviews. That's it. She was a wild girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Babs like, is a wild girl, like you bro. Can put, like, go pull up the Barbara Walters, Richard Pryor interview. She lets two of them fly. Big. Yeah. Big. See, it's hard for me to say. Now you talk about niggas. I can't. You can say it. I can't say it. You I just think said it. Yeah, but I feel so uncomfortable. No, you say it. Yeah, I, I don't that, like the nigga. Period. Yeah, but you see, I don't. I don't say I don't like the nigga. Period. So I think this is what this was. Is they're like, hey, we're going to be comedians, kind of like workshopping, talking shit. Yeah. Right. And then Seinfeld comes along and nerds it up. You know, only can you say that, right? 
And the reality is, is if they were actually at a table at a comedy club in private without the cameras rolling, they would, everybody would be saying that shit. Well, I think uh, this was interesting because to your point, yes, I think Seinfeld, Seinfeld is the one who recognized, like, I don't know if y'all should be saying this. On camera. Probably. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, R.R., he's, in a, he's, he's, a, he's a member of an oppressed group, right? Jewish yeah. people. Yeah. And so he wouldn't I mean, want nobody Se using Jewish Seinfeld, slurs. Seinfeld also said on a late night show, he's like, I can separate the art from the artist with Cosby. And then they went to commercial. He was like, I kind of regret that. <laughs> I don't know if that was the smartest thing that I should have said. But, but the knee-jerk reaction was just separate the art from the artist. So that's a, but you know why? Because that's such a cliche thing to say. Yeah. Until you realize, well, wait a minute now. Now, you know what? Really the artist is? really jumped out the window. Yeah, he went out the window. <laughs> you know but what, what it really is, is he's a comedian, so he's looking at the comedy, and he values comedy more than anything. Yeah. And I think when you're with people who value the art more than yeah. anything, they can put these other things aside. Yeah. And that's just four dudes that really value the art. And by the way, you can critique this moment with Chris, Louis C.K., Ricky Gervais, and Seinfeld. Yeah. But to call Chris a super coon or to say Chris panders to white people with his comedy, you ain't watched enough Chris Rock, dude. Well, that's also a bunch that's of kids on the internet that aren't old enough to know fucking Chris Rock. Well, Jason and Ebony aren't... Well, Ebony's younger, you know what I mean? But Jason's... It, huh? Oh, you want to do an ad? Can, we, can I use Make the bathroom sure, real yeah. quick? All right, let's pay some bills. Um, Y'all stop disrespecting the GOAT Chris Rock, please. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time, all right? Salute to Squarespace, man. I'm happy that Squarespace has been advertising with the brilliant idiots all these years. But I'm also happy that so many people decided to start their websites because of Squarespace, you know what I mean? Because it's not just the websites you're creating, you're, you're actually starting a business, you know what I mean? So this might be, might be your first foray into entrepreneurship, so salute to you. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue screen for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, and newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sin. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. What else we got, Schultz? What else we got? Guys, uh, listen. If you're out here, you're trying to get Taylor pregnant. Um, True. There's only one way to do it. That's Real right. Real talk. I mean, it's the Chewy. You got to get Bluey with the Chewy. Bluechew.com. Same active ingredients inside Viagra Cialis. But this is the Chew. This is one we rock with. This is one that we break backs with. You know, slime them up. This is the truth. <laughs> Bluechew.com, okay? Make sure you use that promo code IDIOTS. If you use promo code IDIOTS, you get 10% off getting Taylor pregnant. <laughs> Make sure you use that promo code IDIOTS, okay? The baby will be born a month early. And then <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you get no percent off Taylor getting pregnant, but you know what you do? Do You get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. Think about that. Make sure you use that promo code IDIOTS. Bluechew.com, promo code IDIOTS. Get out there, okay? It's backbreaking season, and Blue Chew has got yours. Let's get back to the show. We got any church announcements, Schultz? Yo, um, this movie I might be in, I think, is coming out. Oh, the, uh, the joint with Jonah Hill. I'm seeing the previews everywhere. Yeah, so... Jonah that, Hill and Lauren London, the most unrealistic couple ever, couple ever in the history of cinema. It's called movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, Eddie Murphy, um, Julia Louise Dreyfus, David Duchovny... Kenya Barris directing, like... Big I mean, Lauren London. Big Lauren Since London. I mean, so many people in it. It was crazy. It was crazy. So, that's it. Mike Epps. You oh, know Mike Epps I mean? is in it? Yeah. Young Miami, right? 
Uh, young Miami was she, out there. I don't there. see Young Miami in none of the trailers, but I know she's nah, in. No, she was in there. The wagon, stupid. Lala, also. <laughs> I didn't see Lala in the trailers up. either. No, no, no. There's a trailer for sure. Well, she, they play. They must, they must play Lauren's friends. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, I mean, so many people, and it was crazy. So hopefully, I got a little something in there. Hopefully, they kept a line or two in mind. That'd be really cool. So that's going to come out on Netflix. Make sure you check that out. And um, also, I'm a fashion uh, icon now. Did you know that? No, man. I tried to get you to come let me with tell, me. me Shows hitched me up. <laughs> He's like, yo, you want to go to Paris this weekend to walk in, uh, what's my man's name? Kid Super. Kid Super's fashion show. I'm like, enjoy being childless, Shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, when you're yeah, childless, you can just. Taylor. Yeah, you can just. Up, oh, <laughs> shit. Holy shit. Because <laughs> when you're childless, you can just up and do stuff like that. Yeah. He's like, yo, the PJ leaving Thursday. Yeah. It'll be back Sunday. You and your wife will go. I'm like, how are you just going to invite my wife? What, what, who going to watch the kids? We got cheerleading competitions. We got school to take people to. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I get it. it yo, by the way, it sounds amazing. It would have been fun. Would love to do it. Run around. Paris. I don't think I'd have got on the jet, though. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But I'd have got there. Yeah. Anyway, so that's going to be fun. I'm going to walk in a uh, Kid Super show. Kid Super's fucking brilliant. And a uh, real, true New York creative genius. He's also the the uh, men's designer for Louis Vuitton. Wow. So, yeah, he's just absolutely crushing it. So it's been great to see what happened with him and or what's been happening with him. So I'm going to go walk his show. And he's doing like a... in all in White Lives Matter shirt come out, run, bro. You think I should? Yeah, don't get caught in those pictures, bro. That's a good-ass fucking point, bro. That's a good ass just fucking in case. point, bro. Yo, if he really wants to kill, talk to me. He can have people come out in Black Lives Matter shirts. Oh. <laughs> just to, yo, what should I wear? That's actually fun. What should I wear? A to Black Lives Matter up? shirt. Black Lives Matter. Bro. Yes. Whoa. I'm telling you. Whoa. You changed the game. Whoa. Bro. I wait, okay. Well, what's another one, too? How do you shake it up? I what think that's be, it. Because it's a well, Black Lives Matter feels so antiquated. But it you're making like, fun of Yay. Well, there's got to be a better way to make fun of Ye. But then you give him attention. What I love yeah, right now right. is nobody gives a flying fuck what's nobody, going on. Nobody, no matter what life. he does. Bro, yo. he's trying so hard. He's oh like, I'll God. marry a white woman. And we're still like, we don't care. I'm waiting for him to announce she's Jewish. <laughs> oh, is she? No. I don't know if she is oh, or not. that would be but he's the type. He's the type. Way. No, it would not. That'd be so corny. That's the type of stuff he does. Oh, oh, oh I married a Jewish woman. How could I be anti-Semitic? Shut the fuck up. That's a good ass point you make. Yeah, that's right that, that's, it, that's please, a good ass Kanye. point. Not you gotta have some Jewish kids. Then. No, nah, not even then. That's like that's so typical, yay. Yeah. Like that's some predictable shit he would do. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? But it's just so funny to see people not care because never in his like professional life have people not given a fuck this much. You know why? <laughs> why? Because it's another white woman. If he'd have got with a sister, Ooh. which I'm trying to tell you, Black Lives Matter, if he would have got with a black woman. And say he got married. I got you. I everybody got you. would have been like, whoa. I got you. I got you. Ready? Ready? Black wives matter. Ooh. But you don't have a black wife. I, I, you don't know that about me, bro. <laughs> You're you right. don't I don't, know that I don't about know what me. your queen identified You don't know that. about You're right. You're me. Right. You're right. You don't know You're if right. I got a fresh <laughs> Nubian in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't know that about me. No, um, but for real, black wives matter, man. That's dope. You should get that That's off. fire. Black <laughs> Wives Matter. Now, how do I pull it off? What do I say when people go, why do you have a Black Wives Matter shirt and your wife is white? Because I love Charlotte's wife. It's my people. <laughs> you know like, who? <laughs> you know? And say, I want to encourage black men to be with white women. Shout out Michael B. Jordan. Yo. I, mean, I want to encourage black, black men to be with black women. To be with black women. I don't know what the fuck I said. What did I say? Yeah. I, I think, think I said it the other way around. I think you I? told me to be like, yo, stay away from our white women. I think yeah, that's how yes. you told that me. What you, that, but hey, that's what you're, stay away that's from what essentially women. you would be doing. So I'm I want black men protecting my white to be with from black, black women. Men. Shout out Michael B. Jordan. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but... You know, but Michael they say word to Dr. Umar. Yeah, word to Dr. Umar. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. Black Wives Matter. Yo, Why are you wearing the Black Wives Matter shirt? Paying Johnson, homage to the goat. Paying homage to the goat right there. But seriously, <laughs> yo, but can we talk about Michael B. Jordan's new milk? Because that shit is, she is on point. Hold on, let me do one trash now. Oh, okay. Uh, Wednesday, February God 8th, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Uh, a special one-time in-person event in Brooklyn. It's oh. myself, Anita Kopax. Tamika D. Mallory, uh, it's a it's an event that the Brooklyn Public Library is doing with Atria Books and Simon and Schuster about my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing. So uh, join us 7 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. Anita Kopax will be out there signing copies of Shallow, Shallow Waters. Waters. 
Tamika Mallory will be out there signing copies of State of Emergency. State I'll, of Emergency. I'll be out there signing copies of Black Privilege, the, the, the book that started it all, and mm. uh, Shook One's Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me. And maybe, just maybe, we might have some announcements about uh, some other releases that are coming Ooh. out on Black Privilege Publishing because this is going to be a busy year for Black Privilege Publishing. We got a couple of releases dropping. So Black Wives Matter. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. So what can we do? What else is funny? What else is That's it. The Black Wives Matter shirt. When they come to you and they say, why are you wearing a Black Wives Matter shirt? You say, because I'm paying homage to the GOAT, Dr. Umar, and I want black men to be with Shout black out to women. Michael B. Jordan. But I'm not going to lie. Michael B. Jordan really stepped it up with this some fucking milk right here, dude. Why do you think this is a step up? Nah, she don't look better than Lori. She look way better than Lori. I, I, I think Lori looks better, but, you know, I... <sighs> To each his own. Lori's a beautiful girl. I just feel sorry. And I said this, man. I said that, you know, the way y'all coming at Michael B. Jordan after Lori broke up with him, he was going to run back to the Caucasus Mountains, bro. Yo. He was going to run back and find him a little snow to play with. I mean, look at it, bro. You telling me you don't want, you don't want some of that milk? Nah. She don't do it for me, man. I don't believe you. No. I don't believe you when I say when when you say that. Nah, there's a there's attractive white woman, but you, yeah. you're saying that girl right there. Not them. I mean, person. Not I me. Mean, she's not. She's not ugly by any means. Yeah, you know we know I mean? that she's a professional model. She's oh, she like is paid for looking good. Oh yeah, she just. I mean, she don't do it for me. Like I like. I like. I like melanin, bro, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. Let me see another picture. There we go. That's the only. Let me see. There we go. There we go. It don't Average. look factory to you, bro. Like, you know what I mean? These guys are crazy, yeah. That's what I'm saying, These guys, yo. Y'all are crazy. Crazy hate. That's not... Eh, eh, eh. Nah, 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 nah. She's pretty. She's pretty. She's a pretty girl. She pre- what do you mean pretty white girl? She's just a pretty girl, man. You don't think that's the Kardashian model, bro? I don't see color. I see milk. This guy, that is a color. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? Sean only, Penn did a whole you movie about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, shout out to Sean Penn. You know yeah, what I mean? but um, salute to Michael B. Jordan, man. The B stands for bunny. You know what I mean? Michael told y'all a long time ago that, you know, he, everything's on the but plate. But what type of bunny? Like snow or chocolate Easter? Yeah, I mean, he goes either way. He said he's, he, when we had Michael on the breakfast club a long time ago, Michael said, yo, it's all on the table, B. That was the easy part mentally kind of go into that lonely place and willing to do whatever it takes to kind of free his people was the, not that was the more challenging part. You know what I'm saying? But it was a lot of fun too. What about white women? Did you cut off white women during Come that? Come on, day? man. <laughs> why, why was that go back there? I like women, period. All women. Everybody's on the table. Okay. Everybody's on the table. Everybody's on the table, man. Everybody. Man. Good for him. Yeah, I'm with him. Listen. The world's your oyster. Yes. They, you know what I mean? I was thinking that the other day when I was thinking about like, uh, uh, I guess bisexual people, like people that date like, um, not even just bisexual. I don't know what the word is, but people that date women, men, and like trans women and trans Greedy. men. Bro, if you're single, <laughs> it's with all those options, it's it's you. I think it's you. That's you. That's you. God did everything he could. God did everything he could to help you get a partner and still nothing, bro. You ain't shit. If you got all those options on the menu and nah, you single, you ain't it shit. is you. You suck. <laughs> you suck. Or maybe you don't. <laughs> that, that is the problem. Selfish. <laughs> Selfish ass. You know what I mean? No way. Uh-uh. Oh, man. Uh, salute to Michael B. Jordan. No, salute to Lori Harvey, man. Lori Harvey, they say she's Yo, out here with Jameson Imagine being bi and being lonely. You got seven I billion people. Bro. But when you got, when you, when you check, when you check off all boxes, when you do men, women, Trans men and trans women? That's all the people, bro. That's everybody. Seven there, billion. There's an option everywhere. Wow. And you can't find nothing? Nah, that's on you. Dude. All right. Nah. Um, Damson Idris, Lori Harvey. Salute to Lori. I like how Lori is moving out here um, simply because when we talk equality, you know how people be like uh, having these uh, conversations about equality and, you know, um, women that are like, I guess, liberated, sexually liberated, whatever, whatever. Yeesh. Lori's able to do all of this and not get called out her name. Well, we'll see. I haven't seen nobody do it yet. We'll see. They're trying to. Yeah, I, I don't I, know. I, I don't think. No attention. I don't think the. We'll see. I we'll see. Who, who you know how it ends up. I think that there's a limit. What to do you the, mean how it ends up? We know how it's going to end up. 
I think there's a limit to the amount of here's the thing. It's one thing to sleep with people. It's another one to do it publicly. And that is the problem with being famous is that all of your relationships are public. Like people go call Kim Kardashian like a hoe and we've only known like five people she's been with publicly. And, and, and four of them were her kind of husbands. unfair. And four of her husbands. That ain't yeah. even whole behavior. They're girls. They've slept with 40, 50 dudes. Yeah, it's not, yeah. But Which, nobody knows. So I think the reality is, is when more people know how many people you've slept with, you become un, a little bit less desirable. But you know what you're doing right now? I'm just telling you the reality of no, the matter. Yeah, that is the reality, but we don't know if she's sleeping with these people. The assumption is by being with them, you have. That's, re that's and ridiculous. And we work off assumptions. To me, that's just, I, all I see is a young woman out here having fun in these streets. Well, you're blind. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're a blind person. Well, you're a blind person. Is that, what you, is that what you did with your girlfriends? You just walked around in these streets? I'm just saying, how, no. do, we, how do we know these guys are sleeping with her? I think it's a fair assumption that two consenting adults that have said they're in a relationship are just getting. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Look at it from the guy's perspective. Yeah. Would you wife up a woman yeah. that you knew your guys had ran through? Would I personally do that? Yeah. No. So I'm just, I'm just, this is just a, 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 a Lenard hypothetical yeah. here. You know what I mean? This is my theory. All of these guys have conversations with each other. Yeah. How do we know she's not giving it up to none of them? It's, it's all yo, yo. they were trying. It's very possible that she's not giving up to any of them. It's 100% yes. possible. It's also very possible that like the lines get blurred between like love and clout. And I think that when you're in entertainment, there's no nothing more Great addictive. Point. There's no drug more addictive than attention. Great point. And dating a very famous woman who has also dated other famous people can give you an immense amount of clout. And that's what I mean. It don't have to be sex involved. It could that, just be dating. Exactly. Because I, you know you're going to get this. And it's very hard to like see, like, for example, you guys start dating. Now there's pictures everywhere. Page six is posting it. Yeah. You actually think that you're more in love than you are because you're getting that positive attention that you crave so much. That's right. So, yeah, again, she could be doing absolutely nothing. But there's no way for us to prove that she actually is. But both of them could be getting the thing that they want, which is clicks, eyeballs, attention. Yeah, just I mean, you're right. And just growing up the way we grew up, we all knew that if a, if, if if one of your boys told you, yo, I hit that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then another one of your boys be like, yo, I hit that. Yeah. You ain't going to like that. You know I mean, I, maybe it's a different out here with these guys. And maybe they ain't really boys. Maybe they like Hollywood boys. Like, we're friends because we were in a movie together. Or we're friends because we're in entertainment. That's true, too. But we're not real friends. That's true, too. I think that's what happens a lot of time in entertainment. It's like the, the circles are so small that we assume these people are close. We assume they're friends, but they ain't really, really hanging out like that. And, and you're right. And I think also, too, when it comes to Lori Harvey, it makes... Uh, I mean, didn't we see it with Saweetie? With what? Didn't we see it with Saweetie? Weren't there like a few gentlemen that were colleagues of one another that uh, allegedly had had intercourse with Saweetie? Yeah, that's what they say. But, you know, with, with Lori Harvey, I think some women feel better saying that about her because she's a beautiful woman. Yeah, yeah, it justifies the fact that they're not dating famous celebrities. Explain. Well, they're going, well, yeah, she just, you know, having sex with all these guys. Blah, blah, blah. She's a hoe. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Exactly, exactly. It's easier to hate on her because, right. you know, you stuck with That's some right. guy you don't even like. That's right. That's right. And what's crazy is you'll talk to those women yeah. who don't look as good as her. Yeah. Who don't have the same amount of success as her. Yeah. And they'll tell you. Yeah. I'm not sleep. I didn't sleep with that dude. Yeah. I ain't sleep with him. So yeah. why does why do you why does she have to then? Because yeah. it's damn Sinidris. No, you would give it up to Damson Idris. Yeah. Because it's Michael B. Jordan. No, you would give it up to Michael B. Jordan. You might not. That, that's regular to her. That That is true. That's regular that to her. That is 100% true. I would just caution women, you know, younger women who aren't like in the spotlight to yeah. be like, hey, you don't have to share all of your exploits. You don't have to share that because, and I know that you're like, oh, this is unfair because guys share it and they get all this value. They get all this clout out of it. But when girls share it, they're, you know, demonized or they're scrutinized. Well, but this this changes that though. Well, I guess what I'm trying Lord to say different. specifically about that is like, there are certain things that, you know, are biological impulses and there are certain things that are societal impulses. Yeah. I think that we have a biological impulse to maybe steer ourselves away from girls that we think have had tons of partners. And it's probably there because that's the only way we can be secure that the kid is ours or something like that. So it's not like, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> not for real. Like, it, it's not like 
It's we'll not like blood test. Say what? We we'll get a blood test. Yeah, but like there wasn't blood tests a million years ago when we were using this method. Like blood yeah, tests yeah, yeah. is the last fifty years. It was like gut feeling. That's it. Yeah. So, so the feeling still exists inside us. So it's not like this is society trying to be sexist towards you. This is some shit that has existed for millions of years, and maybe we could talk our way out of it, and maybe over the next few hundred thousand years we could move away from it. But yeah. right now, for a guy to judge that. That ain't my fault. That's a million years of fucking evolution's fault that makes me judge yeah. it. So I would just caution young women, don't try to change evolution in your lifetime. If if you know that guys have a biological impulse to kind of look down on this and you want to be in a relationship and have a marriage and have children and you know that sharing all that shit could potentially hurt your chances of that, if you want to do it, that's on you. Just know going into it, you could get hurt. If you want to go snowboarding, no getting into it, you could break your ankle or you could break your wrist. Yeah. Just know the costs of oversharing this shit. You're right. And that's why I don't That's think not saying don't fuck people. You can fuck as many people as you want. Just don't share them with the fucking world. I don't think I, I don't I don't think she fucking none of them. Again, maybe she's fucking none of them. Yeah. But I'm just saying there might be a young girl that sees Lori doing this and goes, Oh, that's the way that you get clapped. I'm gonna share every rapper yeah. that I've been with. The reality is, you 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 gain that attention by not sleeping with him. And by the way, that's with any that's hundred percent celebrities. Hundred percent. If you the if you the woman that's hard to get that all these guys have tried to holler at, and none of them can say they got it. Yo, oh my god. What do you think a guy wants more? The girl who got ran through by every actor and rapper, or the girl that every actor and rapper wanted to be with, but she was like, I'm not getting with some fucking actor or rapper who's just gonna use me. Who, who do you think the guy would rather make a family with more? Easy date answer. More? I mean, it's not it's even a, a question. Not, it's an easy answer. So I just, I just hope that young women think like this instead of thinking like the quick clout way, which is like, I'm going to share a story of every time I fucking blew a guy on a bus. That's going <laughs> to get me a hundred fuck thousand views on TikTok. Yeah, it's also going to have people looking at you crazy. Blowing a celebrity on a bus is crazy. That's why You're blowing man. the wrong celebrity if you're on a bus. You on a bus, You're bro? not even in an Uber that he paid for. Uber? You blowing on the bus? Even a helicopter. With the little baby fat teen pregnancy jacket Yo, on with the that, fur on it? That, Whoa. that's baby fat Whoa. behavior. Oh, right he told there. you he was a dream chaser and you believed? <laughs> they believe everything. Whoa. You put a baby fat jacket on a girl, Whoa. she believed everything, Whoa. Bro. Whoa. I'm going to get you out the projects. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> there you are. Um, <laughs> Still. Huh, Taylor? Why do you you got to... Uh, can you... Why do you think that all these men aren't like... Or not even just men, just in Hollywood. Don't they just share women in general? Yes. And when I say, when I say share, I'm not saying like, oh, I get her next. Like, not a pass along. But I'm just saying it's a small circle. Yeah, the difference, all, between, the difference between sharing and wifing. These guys be looking like they... But they like do they, the same thing with Kim. Like, guys want to be just as popping as these girls now. Like, yeah, but with Kim... Th here's the thing with Kim. Once again, what's your everybody question? we talk about with Kim, she was either married to... That's not true. Who? Oh, wait, man, what's who, your what, question? Or in a serious relationship. Who? I what's know, your question? Ray J was her boyfriend. No, but if you watched her show, that's all, like, when she was single, she was dealing with, like, a security guard and everything else like that. that Kim has been married, like, four times. I know. She was married before... She married somebody before Chris Humphreys... She married Kanye. She's been married at least three times. She married, uh, yeah. But you yo, don't also, hate on Kim, yo. I'm no, no, wait. What are you trying Kim, to even find somebody to have a baby Kim, with? But yo. like what you just said though, too. What? what when what, it what? comes to like dating wise, yeah. like I, I don't, I don't think that there's mu as much scrutiny from women to men about men who have multiple partners, and I, and I imagine that's probably some evolutionary shit too. Like, if y'all hated dudes that slept with a lot of girls, we just wouldn't. If you didn't, if you didn't do it, if you didn't sleep with us because we slept with a lot of girls, we wouldn't. As simple as that. Like, but the reality is, I think biologically, it's not as bothersome to you. I, I just assume that because y'all, y'all assume that men are gonna do that anyway. I also think you know it's I mean? like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's. If we like look at history and we look at you know evolution. It was a way to show status. Like, oh, wow, this guy has all these girls. Well, then he must yeah. have something that allows him to have all these girls. And, and, so it's an indicator of, of value. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I think a lot of times what happens is, like, we chalk up the inconveniences of life to society a lot of times. And sometimes they are societal. Right, that, that that the one you're talking to definitely society. But well, well, no, I think that sometimes it's societal, and sometimes it's biological, and I think that anything that's inconvenient, inconvenient to us, we chalk up as societal. We go, well, let's just change that. 
When in reality, you might be dealing with like a million years of evolution that has us feeling a certain way about this behavior. I know guys that absolutely positively would have wiped certain women, women that we know slept with a lot of the homies, mm -hmm. if they didn't feel like they would be getting judged by society. Well, keep another thing in mind. It is the, the, the number one worst thing that can happen to a human being is being ostracized by society. That is the most terrifying thing to a human being because for fucking millions of years, if you were ostracized by your society, you died. If you didn't have the yeah, group, yeah, if you're alone yeah, in the yeah. fucking jungle, you're yeah, dead. Yeah. So the last thing, that's why people want to agree. That's why people want to be part of the tribe. That's why people want to figure out what the opinions of the group are and appease the opinions of the group. Yeah. It's very terrifying for a lot of people to say something that goes against the grain because we've been built in a way to go with it. Absolutely. Right? So I think that given that certain certain situation, it's like if you are with a person that has done a behavior that some people- Has gotten around. Is, yeah. You know what I mean? Th then you're going to be more hesitant to be with that person, despite even having feelings because you're worried about the I, ostracization. I think if people didn't know, like let's say you, you know, wife up a young lady who's not from your state or your hometown. You got it but right. But she tells you her body count. You just stay out of the city she from. Exactly. Then you don't see nothing. Your wife in, wife in Missouri. That's it. And also, if you're that girl, m just keep your business to yourself. That's right. And by the way, I ain't ask you. And to your point, you women, women, like. women will do that. To your point, women will do that. If a woman knows she used to be popping that thing somewhere, mm -hmm. or she was a stripper somewhere, mm -hmm. we keep ain't that never shit going to, to that city. Nope. You we know not, what I mean? No. We ain't, nope. I hate Miami. Why? Ugh. You the weather. High school the humidity. reunion? No. No, 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 no. Why? Keep that shit to your damn self. But uh, salute to everybody living their life like it's golden, man. Do you, man? I'm married. I don't care. Uh, Iggy Azalea's OnlyFans earns $307,000 in 24 hours. How much of that do we think came from Michael B. Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't let Michael B. Jordan be great with his fucking prime milk, bro. This guy, right? Yo, Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea making 300K. Is that a lot? In 24 hours? Yes, you rich bastard. <laughs> no, I mean this like... Okay, how much you think Beyonce would get if she dropped an OnlyFans? Come on, man. Come on. Now, nah, come on. Come on. Why? I know we're Why? comparing apples to oranges. Yeah, come on. But, oh, are these the videos? Oh, that's Big Ig? Oh, she got some birthday. She got some birthday. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, she does. But she does, though. Look at that. But it's, it's got to be more than that. <laughs> you oh. said what? That's Iggy? I mean, it's got us. <laughs> You know, pretty I mean, quiet. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. It's $25 a pop. $25 is a lot just for some ass shaking, man. Yeah, 25 That's her right there, too? Nah. Oh. Listen, man, salute to her, man. Listen, I don't know what's on OnlyFans. I've never been on there, but if people are paying to see you and you can make $300,000 in a day, why do you not? Know some people will never make $300,000 in their life. No, I, listen, I know it's... I guess I'm like... I don't know, the, the the rumor was Bad Bunny or whatever. Yeah, so it was like Bad Bunny, you know who she was? Catch Me Outside, girl. She made a million dollars in like a few hours. I don't believe that. Bad Barbie. I don't believe that. Bad Baby, Bad Baby. No, dead ass, that, she bro. did. They got receipts. She made over like something crazy, 20 million, 50 million on fucking OnlyFans. It's nuts. Now it's a bunch of creeps because they were basically counting down until she turned 18 to make it to make it live or whatever. What? Yeah, it was it was disgusting, but um, but still, it's like, did Iggy promote her OnlyFans drop? I don't know, because we're hearing about this after the fact. I don't know, man. Whether you make a million in six hours or three hundred thousand in twenty four hours, man, you yeah, that's a win. That's big, Ig. All right, okay, Iggy. Oh, see, now you a fan of milk. Now that <laughs> Iggy look better than that. Other, Iggy look better you, than um the woman Michael B. Jordan with. No, I know, I know, but I'm just saying you you used to complain about the lactose. <laughs> no, and I now, don't. I think now that, you that, out here. There's there are pretty white women out there, you know what I'm saying? But that Iggy looked better than Michael B. Jordan's wife. Our uh, girl. Why? She just looked better to me. I don't know. No, it ain't because of the ass. I don't know if the other woman got ass or not. She just looked better to me. I just she's a better looking human. She looked like Nicki Minaj a bit. 
Isn't that interesting? You think Iggy Azalea looks like Nicki Minaj? Yeah. I mean, if you actually look at the video, watch. In the beginning of the video, it's going to replay right now. You and think, wait, look, watch. You think she's moving like Nicki? No, I think that she's... You think they physically look alike? I think that they maybe both went to the same guy. <laughs> and <laughs> that guy has a style. This guy is so crazy. I mean that. I mean, like, artists have styles, right? So, like, what if the plastic surgeon has a style? Salute to Iggy. When did he drop some new music? That's what the streets really want to know. Do they... <laughs> All right. Cool. You know what I mean? Like, do they or do they want the nudes? You know what I mean? Like, if she dropped an album, she ain't selling $300,000 worth of copies in oh, day one. <laughs> like, let's just keep it a buck. Oh, this guy's so crazy. Uh, little, little TJ arrested for gun possession. I don't understand why. I don't understand how come people just don't hire armed security, especially in New York City. There's so many off-duty police officers. Yeah. So many police officers who are retired that will hold that down for you. They, they have legitimate services. They are licensed. They are insured. There's absolutely no reason for you to be running around holding well, is, your own pistol. Is he, a, is, he, is he like part of a gang and like they can't hire cops because that gets looked at as like... Are we still doing that? We still the generation that's screaming no security? Bro. Like, that's insane to me. Like, if you are worth something, protect it. And you protect it by having armed security. But then you can't claim thug. Yes, you can. Why not? Why? why? By the way, why do you still want to claim thug? That's how you get RICO charges. But I thought that's what the fuck is going on. What? Like, I thought there's gangster dudes who are like, yo, we can't hire the police because you can't be rapping about how horrible the cops are and then you hiring them. I think you can. I mean, you, you can, but it's going to be looked at as if, fraudulent. But if you're being specific about a system and, you know, things that police do, that's one thing. You right. know what I mean? But then your ops are going to go, yo, you hired the cops. Like, what they say about Takashi? The first thing they said when he was going around Chicago, they're like, you hire police. Look at this. <laughs> Who doesn't hire police when they go to Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> like, what I, are you talking I'm about? I'm just saying, this is one of <laughs> I'm the... I'm with you. You know, this is one yeah. of the, the, the troubling things about, you know, being a gangster. Or being a rapper. Or being a rapper. That's the, you, that's the sad part. And the, 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 the lines are blurred for no reason. Yeah. You rap, bro. Yeah. Go rap. Go make money doing shows. Yeah. Like, I don't care about this gangster shit. Is he affiliated with any gang? I have no idea. I just know that there's no reason whatsoever. He just got shot, what, six times, seven times? So I might, I understand the also, trauma the that may come with that. The handgun was found inside the car during a search. So, it, like, it's probably his car. So he's responsible. But maybe one of his boys is essentially there to take the rap in the event that they well, can search if, the car. Well, that, if that's the case, he wouldn't have got arrested. But if it's his car and a gun's in the car. Nope. If it's, if the gun's in the car, even if it's your car, if somebody says, no, that's mine, that's who gets. Really? Yeah. They don't, they, they, nah, yeah they don't, they well, maybe he got to tell his boy, remind his boy what his position is and to play that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, isn't that, isn't that the job from the homies a little bit? Listen, if it's your gun, that's your only job is to be held accountable for your, your shit. There we go. You know what I'm saying? If it's my gun, I don't want you to take that charge. You know what I mean? Yo, what if somebody shoots at you and you shoot them back, but the gun that you got is illegal, do you also go to jail? Or, I don't know. huh? You do? Ain't that crazy? You can't even defend yourself. Get a legal gun, get a legal firearm. But I thought in New York, that's like almost impossible. I think the laws are laxing a little bit. I've been hearing I don't stories. know if I want that shit. I, New York is too, it's too stressful for there to be guns, bro. Motherfuckers step on your sneakers and then. Well, they got to go back to the way it was then. Which is? Like, no tolerance for it. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. No like, tolerance for guns. I like guns in the suburbs. You might need a gun in the suburbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. in the city? Where there's a cop on every fucking corner? Yeah, 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 yeah Like, if, yeah, yeah. if you need a gun in the city, you up to some wild shit. Yo. Yeah, there used to be a time New York was a whole lot safer. You know what I'm saying? When you when I first moved up here in, like, 06, certain shit that's happening now, like, in Times Square and stuff, you wouldn't see that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now it's like, shit. I don't know who packing. You want to do some uh, Ask an Idiot, Taylor? Well, that's... What MLK Monument? Oh, when they did the embrace. They did a monument. I think that y'all need to get y'all mind out the gutter because I didn't even think of that being a dick till I saw all the memes. Oh, there was I didn't think it was dick. I didn't know what it was. And you know what I mean? But I didn't think it was penis until all of y'all started freaking you know that you know the big black guy that's sitting on the bed with his dick hanging? <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. put the monument on him. Yeah. yeah you know what yeah. I mean? They got the they got the white cop who got a train ran on her by all the other police officers. They got her holding this shit. I didn't even think yeah. about that. It looks like a heart. 
It does look like a heart. It looks like a heart. I actually, I don't, I don't think it's bad at all. And everybody's I, what, what talking think, about it. So what I think good. that's bad about it is like, yeah. I don't know that's Martin and Coretta unless somebody tells me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, give me Martin and Coretta's head. Pause. <laughs> 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 Yo, man, I really can't believe that, that you don't like Michael B. Jordan's new milk, man. I don't see it. Bro. You don't think she's grippy? I mean, that ain't no upgrade from Lori. <laughs> but do you think that she got that grip master? I don't know what grippy is. What is grippy? You don't think that she, she, she. I'm she married, got, bro. What is grippy? You don't think that she got the, you know, the grip that stole Christmas, bro? What? Because she got like a little greenish hue? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. What? She. You don't think she's grippy? What you mean, like the snatch? Yeah, she got the grip. I ain't thinking about her like that. I'm just saying, do you think she got the grip master? <laughs> do you think she's man. blood or grip? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you think she is? What do you think she is? Uh, this guy Come is on, so bro. crazy. Calling her the grip reaper for no she's reason. She's the grip bro. reaper, bro. <laughs> this guy is so crazy. She is. She's the grip made Packers quarterback, man. Oh, <laughs> she <laughs> really is. You don't think that uh, she's grippy? <laughs> Damn. Grippy red? <laughs> well, like grippy pink, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? But do you think she crazy got it like that? calling her Scotty Griffin, bro? <laughs> yo, guy is wow. Yo, wow. She might be Scotty Griffin. This guy is wow. Oh, she man. might be Scotty Griffin. Oh, <laughs> That's all I'm saying. We don't know what Michael B. Jordan is going through right now. He really might be going through a situation. <laughs> he really might be going through a situation, oh, dude. Man. I hope he gets a grip on this, this yo, situation. If he man. doesn't, I know somebody who will. <laughs> You know, I got a feeling. I got a feeling I know somebody who just might get a grip on it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, can we ask? Can come we do on, some, Taylor. Let's do some Ask a Grippy It's right now. If we, let's if do we some could. Ask a Grippy It's Taylor. Oh, when is the official launch of Barry and Idiots? I can't wait, Mr. White of QB. Soon as the studio is built. Come on. When the studio Black was, History Month. That's right. <laughs> when the new studio is built, we will officially launch Brilliant Idiots. How far are we away from the new studio being built? I give it, I give it a month. A month? I think I give it a month. Right. Yeah. Okay. We got designs in and everything like that. So. Uh what's the oh, let me see that scroll up? LJ Havlicek says, I liked what Charlemagne said about mainstream media last pod. How do you change the narrative? I don't even remember what I said about mainstream media. So just I, I'm sure I explained it. I I would think I don't know. Uh, JCO says, "What are some of the things that you're glad didn't work out for you?" Ooh, it's a good one, Schultz. That I'm glad didn't work out for me. What's her name? Yeah, all of them. Except you know, for the white, all of them. <laughs> Except for the white. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad yeah, all of yeah, them didn't yeah, work yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah. I'm here right now, like, yeah, 100. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just in general? Oh, I'm glad that there was like, you know, certain shows I was going out for before I decided to like go all in on YouTube. I'm glad that didn't happen. I'm glad that I never got any like, uh, you know, specials early on in my career because then I would have never pursued, you know, comedy on social media, YouTube, et cetera. So I'm glad yeah. that all those doors were closed to me so I could have developed this other way of doing things has given me so much more freedom. Shout out to the grips. This is a weird question. It's not a weird question. Maybe the way I'm processing it is different. Yeah. If somebody would have asked me this five years ago, my answer would have probably been different. But what I'm yeah. realizing the older I get is everything has worked out for me. Exactly. There's nothing that exactly. has not worked out for me. What's for you will not go by you. Uh, Old Scottish proverb. That's right. So everything that has happened that I guess you say didn't work out, it it was the universe inspiring for my greater good. Yes. Every, when I say every single thing, every single thing. So yes. it's just like, I, you know, I don't even look at it as, what didn't work out for me? I, everything has worked out. Yes. You know? Uh, DVR94, what do you guys think has contributed to your longevity in the podcast media world? I like questions like this, and I'm going to tell you why. I salute to our guy, Looney. Looney, he tells me he talks to you. You know Looney, right? Mm. From the uh, It's Up There podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Looney because Looney, you know, he, um, he talks to me a lot about, well, he talks a lot about wanting information, and he mm. goes to a lot of different podcasters, radio personalities, people that are in the space that, you know, he desires to be in. And he asks questions. And that's how I am. You yep. know what I mean? When yep. I want to be in a space, I go ask questions, you know? Yep. Uh, and I think that, I don't know if, I know you do. I don't know if I do a good enough job of 
giving out information. I think you're very generous. I just think it's getting access to you. But I don't think you've ever like withheld information. Definitely not with me whenever I've asked you things. But like maybe I don't do enough of it here on the microphone. No, I think you do more here than one on one because there's not as many opportunities for you to one on one do that. With True. People. But True. I think you give away game all the time over here. Huge part of this podcast, I think, is giving away game. Yeah, you're right. I, you know, you're, you're right. The problem nowadays is nobody listens to the people who are actually doing it. You rather people would rather listen to the person telling you how to get things done when they themselves haven't even done what the fuck they telling you that you can yeah, do. Yeah, you got to pick the advisors. Pick, <laughs> the, pick the mentors. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah, just because yeah, some yeah. shit sound good don't mean that it is good. Except you know what I mean? I guess so many people out here getting paid literally to tell you how to do things they haven't even done. That's why I know for a fact the next wave of, like, um, experts mm -hmm. are going to be the people who can't just talk about it. But they've done it. They got to have that's, done it. That's, or they got to yeah. be living it in the moment. And that's what seems to be like a lot of people blowing up on Instagram right now are are guys who became, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't want to call them influencers. What are these people called? Coaches? The, the coaches, life coaches. Yeah, life, yeah, 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 But they're yeah, yeah, people yeah. who have made like $100 million already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so it's, And then that, that access that you now have to those people who have right. already sold a company for that's right. $200 million, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, I'd like that's to right. know how you did that's these right. things. I don't want to talk to somebody who has Googled some shit and is just regurgitating what they Googled yeah. or regurgitating what they read in a book. Yeah. Like, Tell me how you made 200 million. Boom. And, and show me. Like, don't I'm get, excited like, about like, that. If, show me. If you, are, if you got the company right now or you sold the company, I want to, I'm all ears for that. Yo, there's this dude who, there's a clip keeps on going viral on TikTok and it's basically he's like, listen, I've asked five billionaires and a bunch of people worth, you know, millions of dollars. I asked them the number one uh, piece of advice to the number one thing that you can do, the number one decision that you made to access this type of wealth. And li he said literally every single one of them said the number one most important decision that you'll make in your life is your wife. Oh, absolutely. Because that person is going right. to build you up to that amount. That's or right. That person is going to tear you the fuck down. That's right. So it was really cool to see all those people. And I'm sure some of those people had made a bad decision with their wife early in their life and then corrected that one yeah. and then saw what a good person supporting you can do. But 100%. I thought Man, that was really interesting piece of advice. That is so business real. advice that has nothing to do with business per I, se. I think it has everything to do with business because it's about stability. Uh, you know what I mean directly. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, but I, I, I think that is a big piece of business that we don't talk about enough. One hundred percent, which is stability. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I saw the change in you as a businessman entrepreneur over the years. And I've seen the change in you as a businessman entrepreneur since you've been married. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? The focus is different. You 100%. know what I mean? It's something about having a level of stability where you can just, you know, go home and know that you got a foundation yep. that you're building yep. upon. Like that is the different type also, of ball game. Also, your brain is not dedicating time to chasing pussy. Ooh. And that is an exhausting task. Ooh. Looking at fucking dating apps all day. Come on, man. Seeing if you're going to meet some, waiting to see if somebody texts you back. Oh, are they going to text you back? Oh, you're preparing for some date. Trying you know to get unfocused a date. is. Uh, no focus. She can't even turn off the ringer on her phone. Unbelievable. It's because she's waiting to get that text back from that guy. That's right. Okay? That's right. That shit That's will right. be so distracting. Being able to take that 50% of your mental energy back during the day. And also like 50%. Is an, and I'm not being exaggerated. That's an accurate number for a single dude trying to meet girl. Fifty percent of their mental. 50? Yo, you think more? Yes. Eighty percent. So imagine that eighty percent of your mental energy is now back to you being creative, back to you. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously you're gonna have to dedicate some of that to your wife, of course. But what I'm saying, it's back to you creating things. It's back to you working. It's back to doing all these things. You, it's you're unstoppable. The inspiration is different. Jay Z had a song called the power of the P-U-S-S-Y. And he's like, the power of the P-U-S-S-Y. That's what makes guys get fly. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of things that men do are for women. We talked about a story uh, this morning, the guy, Darius Miles, who played for the University of Alabama, you know, uh, got arrested for capital murder. Him and his friend um, shot a young lady because the young lady didn't want to holler at him, right? That's what the young lady's mother said, right? And I, it made me think about, man, when we were young and we got rejected, rejection just made us want to be successful. You know what I'm saying? Rejection just made me be like, I'm going to put myself in a position where, you know, you're going to regret telling me no because I'm going to be that guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you yeah. watch the Social Network movie, 
Mark Zuckerberg built Facebook off of rejection. Off of rejection. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mike Jones made a whole song about it. Back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all, all on me. me. Yeah. And it's just like, yo, damn, what 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 has gotten into these people? Let to, it be your fuel. Yeah, let it be your fuel. How 100%. have we gotten to the point where rejection motivates you to murder? Is the male ego that fragile? Yes, it is. A lot of them. It is. <sighs> yeah, it's fucked Y'all up. Y'all brothers need therapy, please. Go yeah, see no, a psychiatrist, a, go sit a, with a therapist, oh, do some work on yourself because, you know. I come from the era of you got rejected. Now I'm a I'm a I'm a grind it out and I'm gonna end up being that dude. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you, I feel so, so. Hopefully you'll want me in the future because I'm successful. Yeah, I feel like we're detached from like what younger dudes are going through right now. I think that like <laughs> like I got out I got out of the online dating game and the dating game right at the peak. Like when I was I was kind of popping a little bit, like. I had a little cloud or whatever like that. And then I'm fortunate enough to meet my wife. I'm out the game. But before that, my life as someone who had clout and had like fans and had people DM me, my dating life was not that dissimilar to some of my friends who had zero clout at all. Think about that. Yeah. Like I got friends who have no clout at all, no fame. They fucking have threesomes, foursomes. Like they just swipe it left and right. Everybody's going after it. It was crazy. So this was like the early days where online dating first enters the conversation. I've been thinking about this a lot and why, and I see a lot of frustration with young people right now. And the reason why I wasn't relating to it is because it's completely changed from those days, right? Yeah, isn't it the easiest time to get laid? That's the perception that we have and why we don't have any empathy for and why we don't understand yeah. it. Here's the thing. So you had a time where online dating pops up and then men and women can contact each other with privacy. So now we talk about that shame thing. Girls can go to a guy's house. None of their friends know. If it goes well, they like it. They can fuck that dude. Then they can stop fucking him. None of their friends know. There's no shame. None of their community yeah. knows. Nobody knows. And it became a little bit of a meat market. Now, obviously, girls were upset about that because they're just being used. Dudes are fucking loving it because they're just swiping left. Come over. We'll have a fucking beer. Then you have sex and then it's on. Yeah. Right. It was amazing for dudes. Here's the difference. And this is what the Internet does. It always fucking disrupts. What happened was back in the day for a girl to date a rapper, a basketball player, an athlete, you needed some shamelessness. You needed to find out their hotel, stalk their table at the club. I get what you're saying. Like, you yeah, be yeah, at yeah. outside the game waving at them yeah. nonstop. Throwing like, your panties on stage. Yeah, like, you needed to be, like, your breath. shameless. Yeah. And, like, like, a quality woman isn't going to be that shameless, right? So the access that famous people had to women... We thought it was that it was crazy, but it really wasn't that crazy. They had access to the shameless ones and then maybe the ones that they maybe bumped into, but that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you yeah, had the groupies yeah. and then that's it. And groupies didn't really get love outside of getting smashed and you nothing. Know, they weren't becoming famous or none yeah, of that, yeah, right? Yeah. So now with the internet and social media and on dating apps, all of a sudden, famous people have access to every single girl in the world through a DM. So now regular dudes are competing with famous people for the same girls that they never competed with them before yeah. because those women weren't shameless enough to just wait outside their fucking yeah. hotel hoping to get yeah. chosen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, what yeah. happened was initially when the when the online data came out, everybody was dating, whatever. And I think how it transitioned is women are going, well, if I'm just going to like go over to a guy's house and have sex, am I going to do it with the guy who's the barista at the coffee shop or am I going to get meat marketed by the fucking point guard for the Lakers? Well, yeah. shit, I'd much rather go to the Lakers' yeah. house. He got AC. Yeah. You know? Which I'm so, sure leads to a lot of guys lying about what they do in, with, in life. And a lot of frustration for the average dude and an inflated maybe sense of, um, I don't want to say, it's not about self-worth, but inflated sense of entitlement. Entitlement or it's opportunity def uh, yeah, for those girls, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, if those girls are getting DMs from all these famous people and then a regular dude's talking to them, they might be like, I don't know if I... I'm like, my life is about famous people. My life ain't about regular dudes. Then they might hit an older age and start realizing, oh, these guys were all using me. It was meat market. Maybe I should give some love and give some, you know, uh, opportunity to another guy that I might be able to. Yeah. But I think the, the game right now is in complete disarray and it's because of, of that access. So I understand the frustration of these young people and I understand where they're going, but I also completely understand what women are going through, which is like, Oh, why would I not think that I'm going to end up with an entertainer when my DMs are completely filled with entertainers? Yeah. Like, why, why would they not think that? How could you yeah. not have empathy if, if for that? Yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if your DMs full of blue checks, 
Then why would you yeah. not think that that's who you're going to marry yeah, and be no, with? No, I get it. I get it. You know, it. so, so it's it just like, makes it hard for the regular guy. What you saying? I I can understand regular guys' frustration. I didn't see this at, at at first because when I was leaving the game, my boys who had no clout at all, weren't famous at all, had a way crazier sex life than me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, that's it. We figured it out. Everything's fine. You don't even need to be famous to get laid. And I think that that has transitioned a bit now, and you're seeing a little bit more frustration from men. And I think that's why, like the red pill community, the manosphere has grown so much. And I didn't understand it. Very fragile community, though. Yes, of course. Very because, fragile community. Listen, anytime you see dudes hating women, it's because they're not getting pussy. It's, you, it's impossible to hate women and get pussy at the same and, time. And, and they know they're frauds. Because if, if, if the reality is, you know, these women are being pursued by these guys who actually have something, you know what I mean? No matter how much you front on social media, you know you live with your mom in the basement. Right, right, <laughs> you know what right, I mean? right, right. But even right, if the young right. lady does want to come over, right. where are you going to take her? Yeah. You know what I mean? How are you going to convince her to come to this hotel when you just lied to her about having your own place and everything yes. else? Yeah. You know? I think it's more, it, it's just a time thing. I think it's like pendulum swinging, right? So the pendulum swung to one direction where, like, yeah. it was meat market. Everybody was getting laid and girls just going to random dudes' houses and fucking them. And it was Dang. the easiest time in history to get laid. So the pendulum swung over here. And now we're seeing the pendulum swing all the way over here where it's like, oh, the girls have all these opportunities to be with these famous celebrities, et cetera. So they're not giving the regular dudes a look. Eventually, they're going to realize that these people over here, it's not fruitful. They're getting meat marketed. They're just there for they're just there to get laid and they're not really building relationships. So eventually, the pendulum starts to swing back. And that's a time thing. But in this current state, you can't falter the women who are seeing all this attention from these dudes that are very successful and wealthy. You can't fault them for thinking that's who they're going to be with. And you can't really fault the dudes for feeling like they're not getting any love on these apps anymore. They're going to be frustrated. Yeah, just don't let that frustration turn into murder. Well, that's what fucking... Because, Lord, have mercy. I'm seeing so much of that nowadays. Guys getting rejected and then they get violent against the woman and yeah. kill her or hurt her. It's just like, bro, let that rejection motivate you to actually do something yeah. with your life. There's you know only I mean? one thing that makes men angry. It's not getting pussy. Every uh, Like, if you see an angry <laughs> dude, he just ain't getting pussy. He could be angry about traffic. He ain't even angry about traffic. Well, if you just got your dick sucked, traffic's fine. Well, that's why I say I was going to say a nut. That's it. You just need your nut. You might be you might be a guy who's gay, but you're in the closet, so you can't get what you really want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that and right there causes might cause frustration. That too. might cause frustration. Exactly. But like at least getting that off, getting that accepted. I'm telling. It's hard to get laid and be angry in the same day. Oof. That is a difficult thing. So if you see frustration from men, he just ain't got no pussy. It's really what comes down to. This guy faked in Lyme disease for fucking 10 years. <laughs> Do you know what I'm point that Chris. I know. <laughs> He's faking Lyme disease for 10 years, bro. You just need a busted nut, dude. That's it. This is it. Jesus Christ, Chris. What's that? Well, I don't think Hitler was getting pussy. Well, hold on now. No, no, no. Hold on, yeah. Chris. Chris just said, so Stalin's problem is he wasn't getting pussy. Hitler's problem was he wasn't getting pussy. Didn't they say Hitler had a little dick or something? Yeah, like a goat bit off his testicle or some shit. He had one ball. He had one ball or some shit. And we don't know what was up with Stalin, but man, also, I a funny. Also, also, you have to carve out uh, psychopaths. Yeah, psychopaths they, are just yeah. psychopaths. They don't feel anything anyway. We're talking about people who actually yeah. have feelings, and yeah. those feelings are causing them to behave in a certain way. I'm not saying, and, and we're talking people. about people who were violent. The, the people we're talking about specifically, this guy Darius Miles was violent because he got rejected by a woman. Boom. I'm exactly now. Let's talk about you walking down the street. You bump shoulders with somebody, right? If that guy wants to start a fight off a of bump and short, he ain't got no pussy. But if that guy goes, if you go, my bad, he goes, no, nah, it's all good. He gets pussy. Because he's trying to get home and he get gets laid. Pussy, that's it. The fuck? Why am I fighting when I could go get some pussy? I'm going to fight you, get shot, maybe get killed. I'll get mm -hmm. shot and immobilized. Boom. Now I can't home, go home and get no and get that, now, now that guy who's like, but I'm worried about what my friends think. Come if on, you man. was getting tons of pussy, that's all your friends thinking about. Come on, man. Come you know on. what I mean? Come on, man. Yeah, come on. Come on. Stop. Simple as that. Stop. I Simple feel, as that. But, but God bless all the women out there, man. Protect yourselves, man. Because I don't. I, I agree with a lot of the stuff Shona just said, and I really don't know what the fuck is going on out here where these guys are literally killing people because of rejection. That is insane to me. And then he was in he was in college playing basketball. He had a future. Like it's not like he was just some bum dude with no future who, you know, got rejected. And when you get rejected now, all your other traumas that you haven't dealt with and the fact that you're a loser who's not doing nothing He's with your psychopath. life. You know what I mean? That's a psychopath. Like, God damn. If you're bro. playing basketball in college and you're carrying a gun, like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. But they, I'm going to say allegedly. 
because it was him and another person. We don't know the whole story yet, mm -hmm. you know, but he is charged with capital murder and the, uh, the, 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 the boyfriend who was an eyewitness who actually shot back at them. That's what he, he, he said what happened. Oh, and then yeah, and then the mother on Facebook said what happened too. So oh, so know. there might be more to the story because the boyfriend was with her. Well, yeah, yeah, the boyfriend was with uh was the girl. With, yeah, so I, I, I yeah, so he's hitting on a girl who got a boyfriend. Yeah, and the boyfriend was there. You know what I mean? So I don't yeah. know where the boyfriend was in that moment. So was it possible he was shooting at the dude and then hit the girl? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's, think that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. That seems a little bit more realistic. That's what I was thinking. But either way, it's still stupid. Still fucking stupid, bro. Yeah. Um, I think we did it. Yo, we figured out everything, man. As always. That's this what, we, what do, we do, baby. On a regular basis. That's what we do. Oh, my God. What? Nothing. Do As what? always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. <laughs>